Today we're gonna to talk about castor oil. This is something that is so hyped up right now. It is purported to help with scarring, to help with fine lines and wrinkles, to help eyelashes and eyebrows and hair growth. It is supposed to help with hyperpigmentation. I mean, it sounds like one of those things that is like a do it all, jack of all trades, miracle oil. I'm gonna let you know what I look for when I'm looking for a good castor oil. I'm also gonna let you know some of the ways that I like to use it right now. And then also I'm gonna share with you some things that I have that contain castor oil already that I have recommended to you for years. And if you own them, I will encourage you to get them back out and use them because it has this superstar ingredient. Okay, so first of all, a little backstory here. I've been an esthetician for over 12 years. And like six years ago, I went back to school and got my advanced licensing. So in that advanced schooling, we learned lasers and light, and I had to get nationally certified to do that, to work in a doctor's office. Now in that, my brain kind of focuses on skincare, usually as it relates to science-backed studies. Now I still enjoy anything that has a promise to it, even if it doesn't have a science-backed study. But castor oil is definitely one of those things that lacks any kind of, there's no clinical studies, no trials, no nothing, but there is a lot of anecdotal evidence. There's a lot of anecdotes out there of how it works for people. I put a poll in my private Facebook group, and I also put a poll up in Instagram, and I got hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of responses about castor oil and how it does or does not work for people. And then on top of that, I got tons of DMs from people about the things that they experienced while using castor oil. I'm gonna share some of that data with you today. I'm gonna put it up on the screen because I think it's really interesting. The, the bottom line with all of that is I did find that a lot of people, it was a mix. There were some people that were like, it didn't do anything for me at all. And then other people that think it is absolutely this wonder product that they will never be without. So that's really important information if you ask me. When something is pretty much 50-50, you have to go into it with pretty reasonable expectations because I do think right now on the internet, most people who are talking about castor oil are making it sound like it is magical. And I'm not saying that it's not pretty great, but it is only gonna do what it's gonna do. And apparently, given the hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of people that responded to my polls, it isn't magical for everyone. So keep that in mind. Okay, so let's talk about what castor oil is. Castor oil is just the oil that is extracted from the seed of the castor plant. Now, what's special about this oil is that it contains something called ricinoleic acid. Now this is a fatty acid and it's a special fatty acid. It is going to help to moisturize your skin, soften your skin. It's an antioxidant and it is also antimicrobial and anti-inflammatory. The other thing about ricinoleic acid that is really intriguing is that it actually has a prostaglandin effect. Now it has a prostaglandin effect on our insides and also externally on our skin and areas where we have hair, which is really, really interesting because I think that might contribute to the potential for it to help our hair grow and the potential for it to affect our brows and our eyelashes. But again, lots of people said it didn't do anything for their eyelashes or their eyebrows, and then other people said it was a miracle for them. So you have to have reasonable expectations. Who knows where you will fall, right? But if you remember, prostaglandins are the things that were in glaucoma medication, and when the, they were studying glaucoma, they saw that as they were administering this medication that had these prostaglandins, that the people were growing really long lashes. The prostaglandins ended up in things like Latisse and then ultimately ended up in like lash and brow serums. And they do work because they keep the hair in the growth phase longer. Now, the ricinoleic acid has a prostaglandin-like effect. So it isn't an actual prostaglandin, but it has a prostaglandin-like effect. So you could kind of gather that it might actually be really good for lashes, brows, and for your hair. 
I could see why that logic, you know, why that would be logical. So that's something that's really important to know. Now, the other thing is, is that actual prostaglandins have some potential negative side effects. So when you use a prostaglandin eyelash serum, I've done a whole video on this, you can get orbital fat loss, you can get darkening of your eyelids, you can get darkening of your irises. Not everybody does. In fact, it's a small percentage, but you can get those things. And so it's kind of a risk to use a product with prostaglandins in it, even though they work really well. So having something like ricinoleic acid that has a prostaglandin-like effect without the downsides of the prostaglandin is kind of intriguing, right? That may be a reason just to try out castor oil because it's also super duper affordable. Okay, so if you wanted to try castor oil, what should you look for? Number one, you wanna look for cold pressed or expeller pressed. That's at least the what I've studied. Sounds like a lot of people really like the cold pressed, but expeller pressed is also a way to basically get the oil from the seed with the least amount of chemical changes so that it retains as much nu nutrients as possible. Same thing with cold pressed. Okay, the other thing that you wanna look for is hexane free. This is really, really important because hexane is actually a solvent and it's used in like glues, roofers use it, and it's definitely not something that you wanna be putting on your skin, on your lips, on your lashes or your brows, in your hair, you don't want hexane. So look for hexane free. If you can find it in a glass bottle that is dark, that's great. Because it's an antioxidant, it is also susceptible to light and can degrade over time. And then lastly, if you can, organic is always great as well. Okay, so here's how I've been using this. I've been doing a couple things with my castor oil. I have been using it as a first cleanse and I've really been enjoying it that way. Now, it's supposed to help with puffiness and lymphatic drainage. I honestly, I haven't really noticed that it's done anything special in that way, except for that I'm doing facial massage and manual lymphatic drainage. So I'm probably getting a little bit of that by virtue of doing massage, but the oil doesn't seem to have changed how effective that massage is. So there's that. However, when I do my second cleanse, I am noticing that my skin is incredibly hydrated and feeling far better than any other first cleanse that I've used. It's really thick. And I, I sometimes have to wash my skin a, a couple times, even three, so that I don't have any real residue left over. So that may be a downside for some people. I've also really been enjoying using it in my, on my cuticles. I have mixed it in with my night moisturizer. I've mixed it in with my Dermatology Soothe and Recovery, just a little tiny bit. I mix it into the palm of my hand and slather it. I typically slather that at the end of my nighttime routine every night, no matter what. And so this has just kind of boosted the occlusive nature of this product. I, I've really loved it during the winter when my skin is extra dry. Okay, another way that I have been using this is I have been putting it, kind of massaging it into my hairline where I have had some hair loss and I've just been doing that on wash days. Now, I haven't noticed any changes whatsoever from doing that. I just know that it's nourishing to the hair, softening to the hair. It's an antioxidant and it's anti-inflammatory. So I know that that little bit of extra massage at the scalp right there is helpful. But again, it is really thick and I've noticed that I've had to wash my hair like a couple times to avoid any of the oil staying in my hair. If you have any tips or tricks for that one, I would, I would welcome them as well. Okay, I've also put it on my feet with socks at night night, I have put it on my hands and put on gloves to really get a great um, conditioning treatment on my hands, especially during this winter. So that's how I've been using it. I would love to hear how you use castor oil. Now I will tell you that lots of the DMs that I got were about lashes. And I know that a lot of people like to use castor oil for their lashes. And it sounds like a lot of people have a lot of success with that. I did get several messages about people getting styes, um, eye irritation, just stuff going sideways with their eyes. So I would definitely be careful with using castor oil on your actual lashes and around your eyeballs. Again, I know that some of you do and lots of people think that it's really fantastic, but I got a lot of messages of people that had trouble using castor oil around their eyes. So just beware of that. Something about the lashes that I did want to point out is that a product that I have recommended forever is the Grande Drama Mascara. I have been recommending this on YouTube and on Instagram 
for probably four plus years. This is a mascara that is infused with castor oil and I've loved it for that. Now, I don't necessarily think that this is gonna grow your lashes a bunch longer, but because it's infused with that castor oil, it's actually gonna condition the lashes that we have. So they're less brittle, less likely to break. And it's also just a really beautiful mascara. It is one of those recommendations that I've had for years and I still highly recommend. And I recommended it back then because of the castor oil and I still really recommend it. So if you were somebody who wanted to get a little castor oil into your lash area, but you don't want to do actual castor oil, this might be a great way to go so that you can be treating your eyelashes with castor oil while you're wearing your mascara. So that's the grande drama and it has to be the drama. It is the only one that is infused with the castor oil. They have other versions and those don't have castor oil in them. Another product that I use and love is the Dermatology Vitamin C E Ferulic. This has castor seed oil in it, you guys. And this is the first vitamin C that is L ascorbic acid that I've been able to use and tolerate and not get red and not just get irritated over time. I've been using this for months and months and months. This is my second bottle. And I chalked up my tolerance for this to the ceramides and for all of these other beautiful ingredients that are in there kind of complementing the vitamin C. I'm wondering if that castor oil has something to do with the with me being able to tolerate this because it is that anti-inflammatory skin softening it's an antioxidant so it is packed with vitamin e so it complements that vitamin c really really well it's a really awesome ingredient to see with vitamin c and it's interesting because i went scouring my stuff to look and see what i'm using that has castor seed oil in it and i was really excited because i use this pretty much every single morning and i love the fact that i get that ricinolaic acid on my skin every day because I do actually think it's really, really good for our skin. Anyway, so this one is something, if you have gotten this on my recommendation, this has castor seed oil in it already. Last, I want to share with you a lip product that I've recommended now for years that you're going to, that's going to be very familiar. It's the Aven Cicofate Lip. Probably recommend this two, three, four times a year in various videos because it's a favorite and it has been a favorite forever. I have, I have so many of the old packaging everywhere and it is so good and it has castor seed oil in it. Now our lips are particularly susceptible to dry, harsh conditions. I get very, very chapped. I probably need to be a little bit more diligent with the event, but castor seed oil can be really, really helpful because it's an occlusive. It's going to help trap the moisture in our lips while they repair themselves. So they're not so chapped and so that they can be a little bit, you know, bouncier and soft and not look dry, cracked, chapped, you know, that kind of thing. So the Aven Cicofate, this is another one that already has castor seed oil in it. Now, of course, you can put castor seed oil just on your lips at night. You can put it just on your skin at night over top of everything else. You can just do that. You can mix a little bit into your body moisturizer and put it on that way. You could put it on straight. It is very, very thick and very heavy. And depending on the type that you get, it may have a little bit of a scent. The Some of the Jamaican black castor oils smell a little bit like ashy almost. And then some of them are practically odorless. So it really just kind of depends on the version of castor oil that you get on the smell and what you can tolerate as far as the smell. But basically this is one of those things that you can kind of use everywhere. Now, if you are pregnant, you don't want castor oil. You don't want to have it on your skin. You don't want to ingest it. It can induce labor. And it's just something that I would avoid if I was pregnant. Also castor oil, you will see if you go researching it, that it is used. People ingest it as a laxative and all kinds of stuff like that. I am definitely not recommending any of that. That is a whole different kind of thing. If you wanted to do any of the medicinal things with castor oil, that takes a discussion with a doctor, that takes a discussion with somebody with some kind of credentials that knows what they're talking about when it comes to those things. So I'm not recommending that you do any of that with castor oil. I'm gonna list down below the castor oil that I most recently ordered. I got mine from Amazon. I have one here that I bought. But actually, after I bought it, I realized that I actually cannot verify that it's hexane free. And so I don't want to recommend it to you. 
and it's also in a plastic bottle. I do think a glass bottle is preferable and I definitely think you wanna be able to verify that it's hexane free. So I'm gonna list that in the description box so that you kind of have a place to start. And then just go from there with the criteria that I listed. I think this is a great opportunity for all of us to gain information from each other on this really kind of interesting and super hyped up subject on YouTube, TikTok, Instagram. Also, if you're not already, please do join my private Facebook group. Join me over on Instagram. It's really fun to gather data and talk with people and and share that over here. It's just a great space and I would love to have you. All right, you guys, I hope you're having a really fantastic day and I'll talk to you in my next skincare video. Take care.